Hey guys, how's it going? So I've been doing 3D for around 3 years now and there are things that I did right from the beginning and there are things that I did completely wrong and had to kind of figure out along the way. So this is a video that I wish I had back when I started learning 3D and how I would do it if I were to start again from the beginning. I'm also going to be talking about some of the mentalities that you need to know as you learn 3D, some of which I unfortunately get very wrong and I had to relearn a whole lot of things. Mind you that this video is uh, from a beginner's perspective and my journey and I want to share my experience learning uh, 3D during this past several years. My recommended app of choice to start learning is Blender. Now I'm not saying this because I'm a Blender fanboy, or maybe a little, but primarily because it is free and open source, it is light and good for general 3D use. It has pretty much all the basics and necessary tools you need. It is also very popular amongst beginners and professionals, so you'll find tons of resources online. But then again, if you're already using another app because of school reasons, or maybe because of work, or you manage to get some of the licenses very legally, then of course you can start with that. Because once you're already familiar with all the jargons and technicalities, it is very easy for you to shift from one app to another and in the future you'll eventually want to start using other apps specialized to a certain task and you'll find a way to integrate these different apps in a way that's the most comfortable for you. Also in the future if you're working for a company then they'll usually require you to use a certain app that follows their workflow and pipeline. Now where do we even start? Well in terms of resources uh, there are plenty of them on YouTube. But if you end up using Blender, then the one that I recommend the most is Blender Guru's beginner tutorial. It is entertaining, easy to follow, and it helps you cover the basics of modeling, uh, UV unwrapping, texturing, compositing, particle system, etc. For Maya, there is Maya Learning Channel, which is also very great for beginners. Now, you don't really have to follow their steps one by one. Add some variations along the way so it won't get boring. Instead of making the chair that the tutorial provided, why don't you make another chair? Or instead of making a chair, you know, make a table altogether. Those sorts of things. Now, I recommend you to check out the tutorials that are not too old because you may find difficulties adapting to the UI and the workflow. Any tutorial for Blender 2.8 and Maya 2018 or later should be good. Now, once you're done with one of these complete tutorials like the donuts, the anvil, the teacup, you're usually ready to tackle other projects by yourself. Now, start simple and understand your current skill. Because sometimes the worst feeling is chewing more than what you can swallow. Trying to do big projects immediately can make you feel down for not being able to finish it, or maybe you finished it by you didn't achieve it the way that you want it to be. By starting small or by learning how to split your projects to smaller workable chunks, you'll learn how to build different assets along the way. But if you already feel comfortable with bigger projects because maybe you've had prior experiences in art, or maybe you're just a very quick learner, then please go for it. Other good resources for a bit more advanced users include Ian Hubert, CG Matter, and plenty of other YouTubers. Their tutorials, while primarily targeted for Blender users, can be very easily adapted to other applications. But don't get stuck on following too much tutorial. 3D is all about hands-on practice. But in case you need some extra resources, the best way for me is by going to a tutorial specific to the problem you're facing, say smoke simulation, and then watching it in two times speed using the YouTube control panel. This should be easy for you if you're already familiar with the interface, doesn't matter the application. Another thing that I want to talk about is building a visual library, passively or actively. Actively by, of course, working on more and more projects, and passively by browsing ArtStation and following Instagram accounts. It doesn't always have to be 3D. It can be concepts, comics, 3D cat designs, for example. This will help you add variation to your creation and help you understand which style suits you best. Now, this is not just like quickly scrolling through the Instagram accounts and all that, but trying to break down how to do this thing yourself. But be extremely cautious because this can be a double-edged sword. Don't get too envious of uh, someone's work, only use it as an inspiration. You gotta remember that they have been working on 3D for a very long time, and what they usually don't tell you is that they spend a lot of time working in their projects. One day you'll eventually see a 15-year-old 21st century Picasso in our station that makes just clean as masterpiece. But please don't let it make you down. Everyone is learning at different phase. You're still doing much better than people who didn't even start. Heck, you're probably even doing better than you were yesterday. 
And when you're starting 3D, something that you'll finish in five hours can be done by a professional in maybe like an hour. And that is fine. As long as you're patient and stay determined, you'll achieve that level one day and hopefully you'll even surpass them. Remember, learning is part of the process. Now don't even think about, oh, I have no talent in art. Oh, I have no experiences in art. I'm too old for this shit. Therefore, I will not be able to do this. No, if you really want to do it and put your heart into it, I'm pretty sure you're capable of doing so. Even I had no prior experiences in art and my drawing is complete trash. And yet I'm still making stuff. I'm posting here and there. While it may be just beginner stuff and nothing major, at least I'm making progress. The most difficult thing for me up until now is actually sticking to a project. What you should know is that while you're using a computer, art is art, and it can take a lot of time to finish. Unfortunately, there is no such thing as purify filter or create art button, and any project that you will do will not finish in seven seconds. Setting up a time frame is a way to combat this. Another way to keep your motivation up is by doing challenges. Punisher or Clean, X3D artist from Corridor Digital, for example, he makes lots of challenges, maybe you can follow that. Or our station also do lots of challenges and usually they come with rewards. So if you need that kind of motivation, then you should try that as well. Another thing to understand is not to get stuck on a single tool. There will be people saying, oh, you cannot make this thing in Blender. Oh, you can only do that in Houdini, blah, blah, blah. While they may be true, most people are missing the point of having these different tools. It's not just about one tool being better than the other on certain aspect. It's about knowing these different tools and how to use it. By understanding these uh, different tools, they will help the artists create their artwork faster. Some tools are more suited to do one thing, yes. While other app might be better for another use case, so use that tool. This is one of the things that most people in misinterpreted from the video that I've made about Blender versus Maya. We should check it by the way if you haven't. Some just say, Blender is the best app, I don't need any other apps. Without understanding that what I'm trying to say is that the art by itself will already take a lot of time. So use those tools that are already laid out and available for you and don't limit yourself with too much technicalities. Because remember, the artists determine the art, not the tool. But knowing which tool to use will help you a long way. Another thing that I want to mention is that it is okay to use other people's assets. You don't need to think that every single furniture, every single leaves, everything in your scene has to be created by you. But you gotta make sure to give the courtesy back to the appropriate creator. Once you're used to doing 3D works, there will be times when you want to try other things. For example, maybe you start with conventional hard surface modeling, and later you want to try sculpting or VFX and composition maybe 2D concept creation. Well, it's very good because 3D is a part of the CGI industry, which is the domain that is very vast. And there are lots of branches of CGI that can still be explored. And having these different domains work together is essential to the final product. But what you gotta remember is to not be afraid to admit that you're not the best at everything. I, for example, cannot do 2D and concept art creation, so I don't make them myself. I look for references online or ask someone else to do it for me so that I can focus on what I can do best. It is also okay if along the way you find more interest in say VFX or game development and decide to change it to that domain. Because as I said, the CGI industry is very big and new opportunities are opening left, right, and center. And later when you start working, you'll realize that you'll be working in a group of people with their own specialities. The final things that I want to say is, don't be afraid to share your work, because if you don't share it, then you're missing your audience and you won't get any feedback. One of the best books that I recommend every one of you, not only for artists to read, is Show Your Work by Austin Kleon. It goes deeper in why you should share your finished work to the public. And that's why you should check out my Instagram and ArtStation, link in the description. Mind you that I'm still a student myself, and some of these things are a bit difficult to implement. I'm still trying to do some of these things myself, so this is a bit of a reminder to myself as well. Oh, one last thing, I promise this is gonna be the last one. Take a break every once in a while. Go outside, because there will be times when your inspiration just won't flow that easily. And for someone who works in a creative industry, where you're expected to be creative, sometimes you just cannot force yourself to do so. So go outside, talk to people, if you cannot do that because of the current, uh, current world situation, then maybe you can play games. Because while we're expected to be creative by ourselves, most of the times inspiration comes from external stimulus. Anyway, what do you guys think I miss? To more advanced viewer, do you have any advices that you want to share? Or maybe there are things that you disagree with 
leave a comment down below so we all can learn together at the same time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It'll help me a lot. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.